In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from a scene like this to a scene like this with a CRT shader applied to the entire screen. The first thing you'll need to know about this filter is that it is using the universal render pipeline with a full screen shader pass render feature. And full screen shaders for URP are only available in newer versions of Unity. So if you're using an older version, you might not have the option for a full screen shader. If you don't see that option, install a newer version of Unity and try again. So to get started, I am just gonna remove my render feature there and I am just gonna start from scratch. I'll make my own folder for the tutorial and everything will just live in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a copy of my scene uh, just because uh, the scene isn't really anything special. So in this scene, I have a tile map uh, with some tiles. I have my character here and I have some background sprite work going on. Uh, and those are just here in the canvas, which is set to screen space camera. Otherwise the effect won't work on the background I have. Uh, this grid here is just the tile map. So if I turn that off, you'll see what it affects. And also I have a volume for post-processing going on. So this is what the scene looks like without that volume. Here's what it looks like with the volume. Uh, if you want to know how to add that volume, I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. Go create empty volume is what I'll call it. And then when you go to add component, you can search for volume, click new, that creates a new volume profile. And then the ones that I have selected are vignette with these settings, bloom with these settings, and lens distortion with these settings. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my other volume. Uh, but these are the only post-processing effects I have enabled here. One thing I forgot to mention is uh, for the post-processing to work here, on your main camera, make sure you have the box uh, for post-processing checked under rendering. That is very important. If that is unchecked, you can see it's not gonna do anything. So I have it checked. So on to the actual shader part. I'm gonna go ahead, right-click, go to Create, Shader Graph, URP, Full Screen Shader Graph and I'll name this CRT Shader Tutorial. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right, and now that we have this opened, I'm going to create our shader properties. So the first thing I'm gonna make is a float and I'm gonna call it a blur offset. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is add a color and another float. And I'll just call this scan lines speed. So essentially the blur offset uh, for CRTs, if you haven't seen them, or maybe you see some of the like things people post on Twitter about how CRT looks better for sprite work. Um, and that is kind of because it kind of blurs the pixels together. So we're gonna try to emulate that. The color here is going to be for bloom. So we're actually gonna change this to fault of white and the mode to HDR. So blur offset, I am going to make this a slider. And default, I'll just leave it zero. Let's go zero point zero zero two. The blur offset is going to be really small and hopefully uh, subtle. Otherwise, you'll just get like a really blurry picture. Uh, the color we already discussed is going to be HDR and default white. Scan line speed. I will also make this a slider between negative point two five and point two five with a default of point zero five. Let's save that. So the first thing we'll want to do is get our scene color. So if I create node, uh, we are looking for the URP sample buffer and we'll want to change the source buffer to blit source. And that's just going to be the screen. So if I go ahead and hook up our output to the base color and save, we can go back to our scene and you'll want to go to your URP rendering settings here. Go to renderer features, add renderer feature, full screen pass renderer feature. And by default, it uses an invert colors uh, full screen shader. So that's what's going on here. If we want to change this, I'll go back to our tutorial folder here, right click on our shader, go to create material. I'm gonna call it CRT tutorial. Let's go back to our full screen render pass selection. And I'm going to drag our material here in for the pass material. And it will look exactly the same as before. It is just getting our color source. So. If you wanted to test this out, you can go in here, delete that, save it. And then when you go back, we're not gonna have any of our scene showing in the game. That's just because we're not hooking up our blitz source to the base color. But for this blur offset, 
we will want to sample our sample buffer here, our blitz source multiple times. And I'll just do the first sample here as an example. So tiling and offset, hook that up to the UV for the sample buffer, pull out our blitz source, or pull out our blur offset property. And I'll want to make a vector two. And I just want to offset it in the X direction. So I'll do that, hook up our output to the offset node of the tiling and offset. And then if I go ahead and hook up to our base color here, save our asset, let's go to our game, select our material. If we increase our blur out offset, it should move in the X direction. And it's very slight. If I wanted to increase this effect, I could increase the maximum distance here for our blur offset. So let's go back here just to demonstrate. Yeah, you can see it can go off screen here. So now we want to, I'm gonna change the blur offset back to what it was. Now we want to do this for four directions up, down, left, right. So I am just gonna copy this and paste and make them all line up. This one though, I want it to go for the Y direction instead. And then for the other directions, I am just gonna do a multiply by negative one. And let's go ahead and copy those two, bring them down here. And we'll want the blur offset to go into that. And then we'll hook up the X and the Y for those two directions. And now if you wanted to see the blur effect, we'll just add all of these sample buffers together. So let's add an add node, add our four different offsets together to create the blur and adding the final two. So everything's combined. And then I will just want to go into a divide node and I will just do divide by four because that's how many times we're sampling the URP buffer. And I will hook this up to the base color, save our asset, Go back to our game and as I increase our blur offset, you'll notice that the game gets a little bit blurrier, the game scene does. So I'm gonna set mine to like 0015. I think that's a decent amount of blur for the CRT shader. So back in here, um, one thing I like to do is add a little bit of a chromatic aberration. So uh, for one offset, I'm gonna make it red and then another offset, I'm gonna make it blue. So let's move some of this stuff down. I'm gonna create a color node here and I will color it red. Let's go ahead and do multiply by this blitz source for the X direction. And I'll substitute that in for the add node here. And I'll want to copy that, paste it down here. And I'll just disconnect that. Add this URP sample buffer into the multiply node here, but change this color to be blue and substitute the result from the multiplying here into this add node here. And if we look now, there should be some chromatic aberration going on. So it might be a little hard to tell, but uh, it's definitely a subtle, more subtle effect. Uh, you should notice that the scene is more orange-ish orange -ish tint. Um, if I were to increase the blur offset again, I think the effect becomes more obvious. So let's try that. Yeah, so you can see one side is going to be blue, one side is going to be red. And that's kind of what I was going for, for that chromatic aberration. And you can also see why the blur offset should be limited to smaller values. So let's go ahead and reset that to the limit that works well. And for our color here, if I go ahead and increase the intensity, we'll notice nothing's happening yet. So let's hook that up. Right now my intensity is at three, but there's no extra bloom going on. So if we go into our CRT shader, let's move the fragment shader over a little bit. Do a multiply node here. Multiply that, we'll hook up the base color here, and I will drag our color node out here and hook it up to that same multiply node. And let's save our asset. And I think that should add some bloom. Oh yeah, it definitely does. So if we decrease the intensity, that's gonna lower the amount of bloom coming from here. I'm gonna leave it kind of high, higher than you might think, just because when we add the scan lines, it's gonna darken the scene a bit. So let's go ahead and add the final part of this, the scan lines. So let's take our scanline speed node here and we're gonna make a time node. And of course we're gonna multiply those. And this is just gonna control how fast the scan lines move up and down. So let's hook up this multiply node to a vector two and it's only gonna be hooked up to the Y. Let's create a tiling, create a tiling and offset node here. And we'll hook this vector two up to the offset. So that's just gonna be offset in the Y direction. Next thing, we'll need to hook up this tiling and offset 
to our actual scan lines. And what I found was an okay result was using the checkerboard option here and feeding in the output here to the UV. You'll see our checkerboard starts moving. I'm gonna change the colors to completely black and completely white. I'm gonna change the tiling for the X option to be zero. Now you can see we got these bands going across here. And you could make this like a, could make this a property if you want, but I'm just gonna set the scan lines to like 200. So now we want to multiply what we have by our scan lines. So let's go ahead and multiply those and feed the output to our base color node in the fragment shader. Go ahead and save our asset. Here's what the full tree should look like if, uh, if anyone is falling behind or uh, is lost. We'll go ahead and go to our scene. And as you can see, if I click play, I'll go ahead and make this bigger. But yeah, the scan lines do go. This look like the scene's shaking a little bit. I wonder what that's, maybe it's just my monitor. Or maybe the scan line speed's too high. I'm just gonna check what my uh, previous filter was set to. Okay, so my previous filter was set to negative zero. There we go. If you uh, slow down the scan lines enough, then it looks okay. So maybe that scan line speed sh uh, slider should actually be from negative 0 0.1 to positive 0 0.1. All right, so this is looking okay. Let's go ahead and add the uh, let's go ahead and add the float for number of scan lines. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to say default of 200, uh, set it to integer mode, and let's go ahead and use that down here. So I will just drag this out, make a vector 2, plug this into the Y, plug this into here, make the X1, go ahead and save that. It should look exactly the same, but now we can change the number of scan lines. So yeah, if you uh, lower it quite a bit, you can see what's going on. We're just making lines across the screen. So 200 is pretty good. That's kind of where I like it. I like it at the negative 0 0.003 speed and the blur offset at like 0, 0 0.15. You could increase that to uh, increase the effect of like the blur. But yeah, that is the tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like on it. Leave a comment down below on what you would like to see next. Consider subscribing if you like this content. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.